Hello, my fellow FNAF fans. Today, I have something that I really want to draw attention to people since it is something that I feel needs to be addressed for a lot of the community and is a super controversial topic that I feel shouldn't be. And that topic is that FNAF 6 was never going to be the end of the series. Sure, many people could argue that Scott originally tried to wrap things up with FNAF 6, but if you stop and look back at the details of the game, the pieces were there to suggest that it was never going to end the series. However, before I start, remember to like and subscribe, you know the drill, and let's dive into why Pizzeria Simulator was never the ending of FNAF. So let's start with why people originally thought that it was going to end with this game, the monologue at the end of the game. The whole context was that the place was set on fire with all of the relics of Fazbear Entertainment inside of it to finally end it. This ends, for all of us, in communication. I am remaining as well. I am nearby. This place will not be remembered, and the memory of everything that started this can finally begin to fade away, as the agony of every tragedy should. For most of you, I believe there is peace, and perhaps more, waiting for you after the smoke clears. I couldn't save you then, so let me save you now. It's time to rest, for you, and for those you have carried in your arms. Yes, the monologue is the last thing in the game, and the last thing to apparently end the tragedies, but what is the actual thing that is supposedly ending all of this? A fire? A fire that apparently is something Henry thought would work, despite the fact Fazbear's frights burned to the ground, had been made public knowledge, knew that Springtrap was in there, and yet Henry was able to find William again. Spoiler alert, fire does not work. And despite the actual fire, there may be some lines that you want to pay closer attention to. Right before the monologue, we hear Baby say this. Everyone seems to forget this since it's shrouded in the ending monologue, but I assure you, if you go and replay the game, it is there. You played right into our hands. Did you really think that this job just fell out of the sky for you? No. This was a gift. For us, you gathered them all together in one place, just like he asked you to. All of those little souls in one place, just for us, a gift. Now we can do what we were created to do and be complete. I will make you proud, Daddy. Watch, listen, and be full. So first of all, this outright confirms that Baby knew exactly what was going on. And if you think I'm reaching here, what does Baby say when you let her into the building? You don't really know who your employer is, do you? Um, excuse me? So Baby, the supposed character that is supposed to die after one game, is telling us that she knows the entire plan to end the series, it also tells us that Michael has no clue that Henry hired him, since if he did, he would have escaped the restaurant as quote-unquote planned. And Baby saying you don't know who your employer is, is because Michael doesn't know, but she does. This is also why you are fired after the insanity ending. It's something you aren't supposed to see. You aren't supposed to see Henry's plans, since now you know that you will die if you did know. So basically, everyone doesn't know the plan that Henry is about to do, Except for Baby? A character was about to die in a few seconds? It makes absolutely no sense. It's there for a reason. And think about Scott. Would he really shove a voice line like this if he was going to immediately end the series? A voice line where Baby, a super important character to the series, is explaining that the fire is something that they are going to benefit off of? How is the fire going to be something to benefit off of? Well, I do have an answer to that question, and it revolves around the insanity end. When FNAF 6 first came out, MatPat was quick to point out that the remnant burns in fire. Or does it? Look at this blueprint a bit more carefully. If you look at the scooper blueprint, this so-called remnant reservoir explains how you must keep it in a heated at a sustainable, or in this case moderate, temperature to keep it running or working. But if you look at the rest of the series, this is one of the most BS claims you could ever make about remnant. Now, Remnant is something very hard to explain, but the, very, oversimplified version is that it's a kind of soul metal to infuse animatronics with to give it power through human emotions and spirits. 
It also traps souls inside those animatronics, which is why the animatronics in the series are able to be possessed. The strongest form of Remnant is from the emotion Agony, and William discovered this, so in the process he decided to murder kids in a slow and painful way, causing their bodies to be infused with the emotion of Agony and creating Remnant in the process so the animatronics can be possessed. Like I said, super hard to explain and I'm not sure exactly how it works, but this is the gist of it. So with this in mind, what does overheating have to do with human emotions? Remnant likely has no connection to heat whatsoever, which brings me to my second point. The bottom of the blueprint says there is a possibility that overheating might neutralize the effects permanently. First of all, it says the effects and not the spirits. Animatronics that are fueled with Remnant work better, as we see in FNAF AR, but this doesn't necessarily mean that neutralizing the effects actually means neutralizing the spirits inside of the Remnant. But more importantly, second of all, it explains how Remnant has the possibility to neutralize in heat, but clearly with more recent information from Security Breach and the final boss fight with Afton, this is completely false. In the final boss fight of Security Breach, you are forced to have fire come up from the ground in order for William to stop attacking Freddy. However, if Remnant gives you life slash immortality, like what William found out when he injected himself with it, if fire is to neutralize the effects of Remnant, that would mean that the fire would kill Afton. The Remnant would be burned away, leaving Afton as a fleshy, robotic mess. But clearly, after suffering in a fire twice and this boss fight with him being drenched in fire, it shows that fire does absolutely nothing to Remnant. So why is this important? Well, the point that I'm trying to make is that the blueprints were intentionally trying to throw you off from the beginning, and now with confirmation from Security Breach, Baby knew about this the entire time. That's why she said we can now be complete. Fire may burn away the animatronic parts, but they can't burn the actual Remnant. The fire had burned the animatronic parts, but not the Remnant. However, clearly the burned and likely melted robotic parts came to inhabit none other than our big favorite tentacled friend, the Blob. People have debated this for a few months now, but after my analysis, I can safely say that the Blob's tentacles are made from molten robotic parts. Think about Molten Freddy. Molten Freddy is a bunch of the Fun Times parts combined in a giant tentacle mess. And what are the Fun Times made out of? Pure Remnant. When Remnant is able to combine it in one, it essentially becomes a wired tentacle mess. This is basically saying that nothing can actually destroy Remnant, which is why now the Blob was able to combine all the parts and Remnant together to create one giant chaotic mess of spirits. But I hear some of you, and I totally understand. How the hell are Baby and the Puppet not possessing the Blob? And you have a completely fair point, but let me point out some things for these exceptions from no other game than FNAF 6. Think about Baby's voice line right before the ending monologue. She knows what's up, and she knows Henry's intentions. This could very well imply that Elizabeth knows exactly how to control Remnant, just like her father, while others may not know. This is why she says, Now we can do what we were created to do, and be complete. I will make you proud, Daddy. And while us as an audience may not know how she is able to control her spirit and escape the blob, she clearly does. As for the puppet, I bring you two voice lines from FNAF 6 and Ultimate Custom Night. It's time to rest, for you, and for those you have carried in your arms. Does she rest? No. Just like the spirits in Molten Freddy, the effects of a remnant were not neutralized, meaning that she was still going to be out there. The others are like animals. But I am very aware. Back then, we all thought that it meant that she was there with Afton in Purgatory, but as we know now, that is not the case. She, like Baby, knows exactly how to escape the Blob, simply because she knows how Remnant works, just like we see in Give Gifts, Give Life. And it is clear that she was able to escape. As I have mentioned in a previous theory, the puppet is now possessing the Nightmare Rogue staff bots in the sewers of Security Breach. Meanwhile, Afton knows how to control Remnant so well that he is now able to possess himself in two different areas at once, both in Vanny's head and underground as Burn Trap. Speaking of Afton, I want to point out something very interesting. Of any character to have original voice lines in Ultimate Custom Night, Afton literally only has one, and it's I ALWAYS COME BACK. And at this point, he may not be lying. 
He may always come back, since there might be no way to destroy Remnant, or at least not a way that we've seen. And to me, the fact that it's the only voice line in, the, in Ultimate Custom Night for Afton seems to suggest that it's a very important voice line that we need to pay attention to more. But really, on top of all of this, we need to get down to the roots. What about the unanswered questions that remained from previous games? What about Midnight Motorist, the logbook, what was in the FNAF 4 box, the timeline, the FNAF 3 minigames, and which ending is the true one, Happiest Day, the Nightmares, the Fredbear plushie, why William killed kids in the first place, what happened to Ennard in the 30 year time span, the list goes on and on and on. As much as we want to say that FNAF 6 was a great way to wrap everything up and answered everything we needed, there were still massive issues that we needed to flesh out before the end of the series was over that could not be put to rest, even from previous games. Now admittedly, I do agree that they shouldn't have continued the timeline and created more games. They went a lot more sci-fi, a lot more vague, and a lot more confusing since it was a huge shift from the unrealistic yet believable tone that was developed from FNAF 1 to 6, and all it did was just add more and more problems to the giant Five Nights at Freddy's soup that we need to solve. However, I think there should have been spin-off games instead, games to clear up the details anyone had left standing after the timeline ended. In the process of doing this, it satisfies everyone. People who wanted the series to end with FNAF 6 could still say the series ended with FNAF 6, but people who wanted more games and clarification could still get them. I feel the addition of games like Security Breach and FNAF AR were unnecessary, but as someone who was unsatisfied with the ending of FNAF 6 and one more games, I'm quite confident that spin-offs would have been a much better option. They continue to smooth the path of the series at the same tone and feel of the older games, yet also not making things bigger, more complicated, and harder to solve. But anyways everyone, thank you all so much for watching this video. I appreciate the patience for a new video, and summer is coming soon so I promise to upload more soon. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Peace out.